गेट रेडी टेन सेकेंड्स फाइव सेकेंड्स स्टार्ट सर आई कंसिडर इट ए प्रिवलेज टू प्लेस दिस रिकमेंडेशन ऑफ द लोकसभा बिफोर द ऑनरेबल मेंबर्स ऑफ दिस हाउस द मोशन फॉर रेफरेंस ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट बिल वॉज अडॉप्टेड ऑलमोस्ट unanimously by the lok sabha so this recommendation has the backing of more than 97% of the members of the lok sabha the motion for reference of this bill which is of more than ordinary importance was made by the prime minister himself he dealt with this subject in his own lucid and inimitable way in his opening and concluding speeches i do not think it is necessary for me to go into matters of detail here even ordinarily at this stage we would be concerned only with the broad principles of the bill it has already been discussed at great length in the other house i only hope that it will be viewed in a similar spirit of understanding and sympathy by the honorable members of the rajya sabha they are perhaps reputed for greater sobriety and wisdom sir i fully realize that the amendment of the constitution stands entirely on a different footing from any alteration of the municipal or domestic laws of administration here we are concerned with matters of a basic and vital character and it is necessary to weigh every proposition dispassionately in an objective manner so that our decisions may be sound our constitution was framed by the choicest of the chosen in our land so it has to be treated with tenderness with profound respect and so far as possible it should not be disturbed except for very adequate and even for only compelling reasons i feel that the amending bill satisfies these tests and that is why i am making this motion our constitution enshrines the main purpose and objective of our natural policy our society is to be based on the twin pillars of social and economic justice the preamble embodies the main objective for which the parliament is designed and intended to function it has besides the preamble the directive principles which in a way chalk out the road which will lead to the goal which has been defined in the constitution still in greater detail we have also certain fundamental rights which are equally entitled to every consideration and regard besides the constitution provides for an independent judiciary and the supreme court the function of the parliament is the most important it has an unlimited scope and it can if it so chooses and if circumstances so require make far reaching changes in the constitution the parliament alone is capable of making a comprehensive and all round survey of things and events and after assessing them in their proper value and aspect it alone is in a position to decide authoritatively as to what steps should be taken to give effect to the central purpose for which it exists the events of the last few years including the decisions taken by the parliament by the legislatures in other places and those by the supreme court have made it imperative that a bill of this type should be placed before the parliament the supreme court deserves 
every respect. Its decisions have to be carried out, but according to the formal rules governing the process and the procedure of a court, its orbit is circumscribed. Sometimes, perhaps, it is not expected even to look at the debates that are held in Parliament or even at the preamble or the directive principles. According to the formal rules of interpretation, it has to construe the articles that come before it. It is from the very nature of its constitutional composition and the method of work prescribed for it limited to the wording of the clauses which come under review before it. So, it takes its decisions and those decisions have to be carried out by us. Occasions, however, are bound to arise and have arisen when the decisions of the Supreme Court have not been in conformity with the declared verdict of the legislatures in the land. It is embarrassing to the Supreme Court that it should have to declare the laws passed by Parliament ultra wires. Mr. Speaker, Sir, the bill introduced by Sri Thomas is a step towards fulfilling those promises and assurances which were given to the people of India by our great leaders, great freedom fighters, Mahatma Gandhi and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. I think that this is the need of the hour. To my mind, first of all, the subject regarding employment and right to work should be included in Chapter 3 instead of Chapter 4 of the Constitution so that the government is held responsible for this. In the communist countries and even in non-communist countries, the unemployed are given some sort of doles to enable them to sustain themselves to a particular standard of living. Apart from all communist countries, social security system prevails in Britain, Canada and America where the unemployed are helped at the time of unemployment.